Hello everyone, I'm going to present the chess paper entitled A Compact and Scalable Hardware and Software Co-Design of Psyche. My name is Pedro Mat Costa Massolino and this work was done together with Leila Batina, Patrick Longa and Joost Henes. Uh, while doing this work, me and Joost Henes were both at Radboud University. Now we both are not anymore affiliated to Radboud University. Patrick Longa was is at Microsoft Research and Leila Batina is still it is at Radboud University. So let's get started. So in this presentation, I'm going to focus mostly on the contribution of the paper, which is the hardware architecture. I'm not going to talk so much about how Psych works or Montgomery multiplication works or any of the other stuff works, the algorithms themselves, because I want to mostly highlight how our architecture was chosen, even though those algorithms influence the architecture, I want to focus only more on the architecture side. But because they were in, uh, they influenced, I have to talk a little bit about the requirements of Psych. Then after that, I'm going to follow with the literature, how they made their work, and then some uh, our approach itself. I'm going to spend most of the time on it. Later, I'm going to talk about the results, and together with the results at the end, I'm going to talk about uh, some difference between our current uh, e print paper and also the THS version, because there was some change done. So what do we need to make Psyche? So for Psyche, Psyche is a protocol that works on top of elliptic curves, in this case Montgomery elliptic curves. It can work with other elliptic curves, but you should work with Montgomery elliptic curves. And these Montgomery elliptic curves are built on top of that quadratic extension field. This quadratic extension field is built on top of a prime field. So this prime field is just operations on top of a prime, and this prime range between 434 bits up to 751 bits. Before, when this project started, uh, it was between 503 bits up to 964 bits. This change on the size uh, completely highlights the fact that when you start doing something for new post-quantum schemes or even new public key crypto systems, you should be prepared to change parameters, change on some parts of the, of the design and stuff along those lines. So it's always nice to have a very easily tunable implementation. On top of all of those stuff, like for these Montgomery elliptic curve operations, you're also we're also talking about a tree transversing procedure. That's how, let's say, the fast um, procedure of doing SIDH works by uh, doing the walk between the elliptic curves and the isogenous to the isogenous. And this procedure itself requires a lot of uh, stack operations and data, data array operations. And also you need shake to 56 that is on the SHA-3 standard. So how do we tackle this problem? So this, for, for this problem, the best idea is to focus on the base of the triangular. So that's prime field operations. You focus on those operations. You focus on the Ketchak F as well. And then you do those on hardware. Then you build everything on top as a softer layer. So all the FP inversion, the extension quadratic field uh, as a software layer, you could also do some of them a little bit more in, into the hardware side, but then it's a trade-off between flexibility and also, yeah, and also make it easy to maintain. Software is uh, easier to maintain usually than hardware. And as you grow, you make everything as a function of the order. So then you can call, put more arguments or remove arguments. So what's our solution? Our solution is a 16-bit CPU. So how I said it, we need function calls, we need uh, data arrays, we need stacks operations, and those usually are well done for CPUs. So then we chose to use uh, make a CPU and then make the prime field operations as a coprocessor of such CPU. So that's Carmela. Carmela is the coprocessor, which was mostly of the project spent time on it. The Ketchak F is, is took from the Ketchak uh, package, so the authors of the Ketchak already did a good hardware design, so we just took it and we just integrate into our CPU. So how is the approach of the literature? So the literature more older is more on the side of SIDH, so they did only SIDH, and they started with using affine formulas with fast uh, inversion units, but that didn't go so well, so then they changed to projective formulas, which has better results. Then later they did more optimizations on the, multi on the multiplier, and then they got uh, other parameters as well, added shake so they can have psych. 
And in that architecture, mostly how it works is you have different multipliers themselves and a special adder subtractor unit together in a main block of memory. Those multipliers, they are fed, loaded and stored. And then you have the, you change the problem for, from, you change the problem to a scheduling problem because now you have to schedule all those multipliers. Uh, so then you need a really good scheduler for that. Another approach, very different from that one, uh, is to focus only on the field arithmetics. So no SIDH, no psych, just to try to solve, make the really fast field arithmetics. There was no SIDH in, the, in, in this case of paper, but it, it's a pretty, it's a difficult problem. So if you make a very fast field arithmetics, you are most likely are going to get really good results. Then there was another paper as well that uses some uh, carry safe notation, and, and that one also uses Montgomery multiplier for SIDH. Um, but uh, our solution, and you should pay more attention, is to focus more on the side of doing a CPU. So be very flexible and be more, can be easily tunable for any parameter in case of any change. Okay, so let's start focusing on Carmela. And Carmela is built around a multiplier and an adder that builds the MAC, the multiplier accumulator. And the multiplier is at 256 or 128 bits, depending on the version of Carmela. Um, we have two versions. So the 256 bit version of Carmela is made for the seven series of FPGAs of Xilinx that uses uh, rectangular multipliers. And the 128 bits version of Carmela is for smaller units that have square multipliers like the Spartan 6 and older series, at least that has enough. The adder itself is done for the multiplier to be used to get in the multiplier accumulator. That's why we have this special adder. And then on top of this multiplier accumulator, we put some pipeline stages, 8 or 4, depending on the operation. And on top of that, we build the FP uh, operations. So let's focus first on the multiplier, which is a, let's say, a problem by itself. So the 7 series I was talking about has a rectangular multiplier of 18 by 25 bits signed or 17 by 24 unsigned. And the idea here that we want, we want, to, we want to build a signed multiplier so then we can both use it for unsigned operations and signed operations. So we are building 257. So the most significant bit is used to basically to flag the multiplier into unsigned mode or signed mode. So one way to build it is to ignore uh, the multiplier as being a rectangular one and just use as a square one. And then when you do that, basically you're going to need 256 bits multipliers. And that's, that's quite a lot. And so then to reduce the number of multipliers, we end up using a technique by Roy et al. That has been proposed a long time ago, maybe at chess. And this, in this technique, uh, we use a technique called the tilling, where the idea here, you see the problem as my 256 or 257 bits multiplier is a square of 257 by 257. And I want to fit as much as possible rectangular ones inside of that square. So you can see uh, this problem here, like you have this 257 bit square and then you fit this small rectangular one. So this figure here is up to scale and you have here 161 multipliers. For the 120 bits bit, bits multiplier, we don't use the, the tilling because we are talking about the Spartan 6 series, which has square multipliers and we built everything around of square multipliers. So we don't need to use tilling, we just use the school book itself. So then, but then the problem with this is we don't do like final multiplication. We just generate partial products and partial products are basically when you do long multiplications, when you were at school, that means you have your, you take a one part of the decimal and you multiply by the big number. Then you have a lot of values later that you have to add. That's the same thing. You have a lot of values that are just partial multiplications that you want to add. In this case, we have 30 partial multiplications that we have to add. The best way to add is to use a unit called the compressor. The compressor basically is uh, a unit that do only additions in one bit. So basically it takes the bit zero of every one of the 30 additions and add them all together, generating a five bits number. So then with this five bits number, what happens is that 
you do all of this for every bit, then you are basically compressing all 30 additions into 5 additions, which is way easy because I'm not doing uh, carries, and carries are usually the, the unit that makes the uh, adders slower. So then you're reducing from 30 to 5, then you reduce from 5 to 3, then 3 to 2. When you are in 2, basically you cannot escape, you have to do, you have to solve the carries. And you solve the carries by using a special adder in this case. So the adder that we used is this one, is used both in this part and also another part for the accumulator. So this adder is a special adder because uh, it has a special architecture around it. Usually for adders it's better to ask the tool to do it, like ask Vivado, ask Xilinx ISC to do it. And they will do it to give you a really fast adder. But then for this size of bits, like around 200 to 500, most likely this adder will not be as fast as possible. It will be most likely the most, a very compact one cycle adder, but it will not be as fast as it could be. So then you could use this other architecture that was proposed in the, by, the pers by the group of authors in the title, and it's called the add add multiplex, where basically you just add two numbers and then you add with the idea of, okay, I'm going to add this number in case of carry zero and in case of a carry one, then later going to solve this carry situation with a regular adder. Then after solving this regular adder, this, the carries, I'm going to feed it in again, I'm going to recurve the, uh, the carry, and I'm going to choose between the solution with carry zero or carry one. Basically, and this makes, uh, this is faster than just doing normal addition. Um, the cost of this, the cost of doing, using this technique is you're going to use more lookup tables, but it's, it's okay. So then after you, I decided like, okay, I have this multiplier, I have this accumulator, but we need pipeline stage in order to make the frequency higher, otherwise the frequency would be very slow. But then how many pipeline stages? But uh, so we want here to match two things. So one thing that I want to match is uh, I have I want to do two FP squared operations. If I want to do two FP squared operations, I can do it with eight multiplications and four additions. That would be using the school book technique. And in order to do so, I'm going to do eight and four. So then technically I want to do and put eight pipeline stages in my Mac. Because if I put eight pipeline stages, that means I can do eight parallel operations. Then I can use the idea of doing always two FP squared. And for additions, I want to put only four pipeline stages, but I cannot put like less pipeline stages unless it's an addition because basically I turn off or ignore the output of the multiplier. Therefore, uh, in the next architecture, I'm going to show this a little bit better. So in here, you can see that you have here the inputs are registers here in the registers A and B, and my multiplier here has internal five pipeline stages. Then the adder is, or the accumulator is used here, so then I multiply two values, then I, I accumulate them to here, this written by optimize adder, and then the accumulator goes back to here and can be also shifted. When I'm doing addition, basically I'm going to ignore the output of this multiplier and I'm going to compress the two values, so the two values are added here and then compressed. And then you're going to, we are going to skip these extra pipeline stages that are here to match the multiplier. And I'm going to add them together, giving up to four pipeline stages. The S here is uh, used as a mask for doing the additions, so then I can do masked additions and masked subtractions. Basically, the idea here is I want to always do the addition, but I want the addition to be effective or really not effective. It's just uh, a way to do additions without really ifs and elses, but just like people doing in hardware, I mean in software, where they just use masks. So now let's explain how the state machine works given the Mac that can do the 8 to 4 parallel operations, uh, the 256 or 120 bits operations. So we have this 257 bits sided Mac and how do we make into a thousand, up to 1024 bits words? Well, we just make it uh, split into words. So then, for example, if I need only one word, then I, this one word is signed and then it's 256. Then if I need up to uh, 512 bits, then the lowest significant is unsigned, then the 
other how the other part is signed. The same for 768, where only the most significant word is signed. By word here, I mean 256 bits of words. So the, how that's how it works. And for doing multiplications of these words, then we use a product scanning technique uh, through Montgomery multiplication. And in the product scanning technique, basically you just scan to the product output instead of scanning to the operands while doing the multiplication. So for example, I want to do the multiplication uh, of two words and then first I look, okay, what are the multiplications that affect the output of word zero of the product? Oh, those are, then I do these operations. Then I shift to the next word of the product, which is word one, and then do all the operations of word one. And you can see here that basically what happens is that in the, like in the operand scanning, you, the index of the operands just increments usually or maybe decrements in a, let's say in a linear fashion. And here your index of the operands just has to keep stable. You add or then subtract the other, you add one and then subtract the other in order to both the index of both operands to keep equal. Um, so here, and then we have, we do addition subtractions directly. And by addition subtraction directly, we just do the addition or the subtraction, then the value is a negative number or positive number. But since we are using a sign representation, the Montgomery multiplication can work with negative numbers. Then later, after we do all the processing, we need to be sure that the output is between zero and P minus one. So then we have one extra operation that makes it from minus prime to the prime up to zero to prime minus one. And then we also added after the chess uh, paper, we added, added addition subtraction that also performs this extra reduction step in case in case it's needed. So how do we control all of this? I'm saying that we use a state machine. So basically you can think of all those algorithms that I just said with all the operand size and we just unroll all of them. So if you enroll all of those algorithms, basically we end up with a 300 up to or 500 states. Um, and this is quite a really big, a lot of states. So then in order to be sure that everything just stays good and anything works, I decided to make my own state machine. And it's quite easy to make your own state machine if uh, the number of ifs or the path of the state machine is pretty stable, then everything just is really simple. Because here, we, what we have here is the state machine is just the ROM and the program counter. So the program counter just stays in the set to the first state that I want to execute. So let's say the first state of the operation, then it keeps incrementing as it goes until it meets like, oh, this is the end of the operand size operations. So for multiplication, you can, uh, and have the same program for both two operand size and then at some point just change okay so in this point for this operand size you have to go to this path for this operand size i've got to go to this other path so then you need this kind of if logic here besides that it's it's just the wrong and yeah and for the addresses of the operations you just use basically shift registers that keep rotating the addresses so basically every time that i'm doing an operation of let's say the value zero of the multiplication of value zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and it keeps rotating. And then it's uh, at some point, it always know which address I'm working on because it's rotating all together. So is this everything enough? Well, I just said to you how I did all the prime field arithmetic, which is a rather pretty hard problem by itself, but that's not psych. That's the only prime field arithmetic. Uh, we're still missing a lot of stuff. We're even missing even the inversion of the prime field or FP squared operations, Montgomery elliptic curves, and all the things necessary for psych and SIDH. So the remaining parts of Psyche are run on top of the CPU. So now we're going to focus mostly on how this on parts of the CPU itself and not so much in Carmela. So the CPU is a Harvard CPU with a custom-made uh, instruction set. Basically the instruction set I made as simple as possible and tried to make as big as possible to be easily decodable. That was my entire goal. So then it performs some Basically, operations, additions, subtractions, uh, shifts, raw, rotations, logical operations, comparisons, jumps, conditional jumps, loads and stores, and push and pop. And I'm focusing, trying to focus more on load stores and push and pop because those are mostly the operations that are really well needed for the function calls and also for the data pointers itself and 
all the other patients are all also needed as well. So this is a cyclical basis CPU. So that's the CPU that basically takes the the operation, the codes, executes, then takes the next one, all in the same hard. It doesn't try to do some pipeline or anything like that. And the CPU basically takes that operation, and if it doesn't match the operation for itself, it just sends to Carmela, then Carmela will have to execute it. And the CPU um, has some kind of pipelining just in the address resolution. So the address resolution of the instruction is, can be solved a little bit later. And let's say in the terms of pipelining, it's kind of okay because there is an extra state to be sure that the address resolution is updated in case um, the values of the registers are also updated. So it's fine in that sense. And the 16-bit ALU, you have a DSP and a barrel shifter separately because I've ended up building the barrel shifter separately instead of using the DSP. And it was looked like a little bit better. And for the barrel shifter, you look to the paper, there is the dissertation there from where I took it. And the RD registers, the base RAM, one thing to pay into account is that they both share some memory region. So what happens is that both, con both the base RAM and the RD registers are the registers they have the same values in both locations um, this can be seen kind of as a cache unit but doesn't really is a cache unit in the, in the other sense of being fast for memory it's just that the registers share the same positions so then when you do some operations you can do use the values from the base RAM and sometimes you want to use the values from RD registers and that's it so the high level of the architecture basically is you have a local bus of 16 bits, that's the bus that connects everything, and you also and the PRO itself is not connected to this bus. It's a Harvard CPU, so then the bus, uh, to program the bus, only the external loading is possible, which is then to hear to the external communication. No, this is not really connected, the CPU cannot load the values from the PRO, only the external communication can access the PRO. The values on the PRO are then goes to a next instruction and then they go the address is resolved, then goes to the current instruction, which is then executed or passed to the core processor Carmel itself. Uh, one thing to pay into account is that because how Carmela works with the eight or the four operations, and basically each instructions of Carmela takes the same size as one instructions of the CPU, then all the Carmela instructions has to be one after another. So you always have four blocks of Carmela additional um, operations and also eight Carmela instructions here. And you also have a stack counter to know because of the pushes and pops. The Mac RAM, which is also, which is the basically the RAM that Carmela uses with the two fifty six bits bus, but that can also be accessed by the local bus. And the base RAM is another RAM that's mainly used by the CPU, where it can store some other values related, yeah, related more to the CPU from Carmela itself. So like the the pointers and the data arrays at some point, some stuff is stored there together with the Ketchak F uh, values, like shake output values. So for the results, uh, I want to highlight a few things. The first thing is, um, the first thing that I want to really highlight is there's never a really, let's say, a solution that's good for everything. Our solution here is that we want to show and we want to give is a solution that works for all the parameters, a solution that doesn't need to be reprogrammed and a solution that's not really fast, but is really extremely well flexible. If it's deployed and it's going to work with all the parameters, everything, it is done, it's ready. Like, um, let's see, it's a good way. But if you want something really, really fast, then you should maybe look for other results, like the cycle up results, they have a lot faster results for us. And if you have requirements for this kind of timings, then you should need to expand this amount of, of resources. Our solution, on the other hand, if you are, let's say, if your timings can be a little bit, let's say, you you are, you accept bigger timings, then our solution can be well fitted. It has way less DSPs from second up results and is licensed as well for the same parameter. And we give not only this parameter, we give also the other parameters as well as a consequence. And, and that's pretty much our contribution. And when we compare this with other schemes, I'm, these are pretty old results. There are new LATS-based implementations. 
and but the main idea here and uh, I also kept these results here because as I think the new results waste a little bit more resources but psych needs a lot lots of resources for a lots of lots of time it needs lots of time to to do stuff and also needs lots of resources it's a very not very resource friendly scheme but one thing that I want to to see it here is that our psych implementation because it's a CPU with the Carmela core processor and we have all this elliptic curve stuff all the prime field arithmetic we can also do ECC as well we can also do scalar multiplication for all the NIST curves so P224 up to P521 and even a bigger P uh, prime field up to the limit of um, at almost a thousand bits and of course this is all done with the same CPU so no VHDL needs to be redone no FPGA has to be reprogrammed just the CPU um, it could even share the same program of the psych you could have the psych program and the ECC program in the same uh, in, the, in the pro itself you can have both programs and just start one and start the other so our solution could also be used later as a hybrid now at the end of the days it cannot do the hybrid but it could be used as a hybrid so between the THS and the aprint that's now uh, that's now that's online has been I think since June or maybe May um, so there are two things the main thing that I want to highlight here is not only that we have the scalar multiplications or the new addition but also uh, we fixed a bug in P503 so P503 had a bug that was discovered by uh, Ultimaco because they took our architecture and did some testing themselves and then they discovered there was a bug for the P503 parameter so then as a consequence uh, I had to update the VHDL files and some other stuff related to the limits of the of the of the representation of the Montgomery representation to have bigger representation and then everything just work fine uh, and then this was updated and then it is already there and I want now to conclude my talk and I hope you liked it if you like it don't forget to subscribe to EACR and to press the like button